Today for our daily Moravian readings, we are in Revelation chapter 4 verse 9 through to chapter 5 verse 10. And we're watching the unfolding drama of the throne room of heaven. And there's a definite shift that takes place in Revelation chapter 4. Um, chapter 2 and chapter 3 are the seven letters to seven churches. In chapter 4, John the Apostle, the beloved disciple, is taken up into heaven and starts to witness events yet to take place. He glimpses into the future. And this is a, a vision of the throne room of heaven, a great assembly of worshippers. That's the one universal church around the throne of Jesus in unbroken encounter and in perfect surrender before the Lamb. If you heard my preach a few weeks ago, I, I unpacked how that is the one church that Jesus is building right now in heaven and we are called to model that reality on earth, even as it is in heaven. So we've got these um, four living creatures. We were reading about that yesterday. They are in continuous, unbroken worship, sung worship. And, and today we meet 24 elders, people who respond to the worship of heaven by falling to the ground, bowing down before the throne of King Jesus. It says they cast their crowns down before him and they join in the worship song of heaven. Uh, they join in with the four creatures. So who are these 24 elders? Well, we're not sure. I don't think that they're angels. Um, elder denotes leadership and, and we know that there are crowns in heaven for those who endure. There are levels of reigning and ruling with Christ in the new heaven and earth that respond to our service of Christ whilst here on earth, uh, part of our heavenly reward. But the number 24 is a bit confusing. It possibly echoes the 24 priestly divisions in David's tabernacle tent. I probably land on 24 being symbolic, not literally 24 individuals, but in any case, they are there to model something to us. Their worship of Jesus, their casting down of their crowns, of their rewards, in simple recognition that Jesus is greater. He himself is their great reward. It's there to model something to us. And I would call each of us to um, take their approach as we read the book of Revelation. Don't get trapped down the rabbit holes of interpretation, what all the different characters represent. The purpose of Revelation is to reveal more of Jesus to us. And in doing so, to call us into the sort of heavenly worship that we see in our passage today. We then move into chapter 5. This incredible drama unfolding before John's eyes. Uh, God the Father on his heavenly throne holding a scroll like the title deeds of this new kingdom. And, and there's this pregnant moment this angelic announcement and invitation. This is the moment for anyone worthy enough to step up and to take the scroll and to open the scroll and to read from the scroll, thus inaugurating the beginning of a new kingdom. And of course, for a moment, no one steps up. For a moment, none are found to be worthy enough. It's dramatic enough for John to respond with floods of tears. But then one is found to be worthy. Jesus steps up and he's appearing here simultaneously as like a lion and a lamb. And he takes the scroll, breaking its seal and he reads its message. Well, the whole place erupts into a totally new level of worship, into a, a new song to mark this new moment. Jesus 
alone is found to be worthy. And there are many things that qualify Jesus to be worthy and to take the scroll. His sinless life, his perfect sacrifice, his creation of a new family of priests and kings. His work for you and I is what is listed here as what qualified him to be worthy. It says, with your blood you purchased us for God. Uh, and that word purchased it is one of my favourite New Testament words, agorudzo, to be bought out of the agora, out of the slave market. Jesus is worthy because he has made slaves into saints to reign and rule with him for all eternity. And that is who we are. I pray you'll have a wonderful day living in that truth.